It can be incredibly exciting to discover that you have a particular talent. And then the hard work starts. For Nindya Bakhtuar, development as an artist entailed crossing an ocean. And that was just the first of many challenges that she's faced. Let's get the full story from Nindya herself. At first glance, it's simply a bakery. But Nindya Bakhtuar finds beauty hidden in what others may see as everyday things. Just as flavor and texture lie hidden within the crust of artisanal bread waiting to be discovered and enjoyed, so can a simple shape create the starting point for an intricate motif picked out on a tile, plate or even a stone. When I first arranged to meet artist Nindya Bakhtor, an art gallery seemed like the most logical choice. But when I explained to her that I would like to get to know the lady behind the canvas, she invited me to one of her favourite hotspots in Durban. So here I am, surrounded by the most appetising aromas. You're originally from Mauritius. What was your first chapter in life like? When I finished my A-level and I love animals, I wanted to be a vet, so they don't offer veterinary courses in Mauritius and I had to come to South Africa. And I did a zoology for about two years, but I'm a creative person and I realized that, you know, I got to be creative and when I chose architecture and it was really fulfilling as a degree in all aspects. How did you come to settle in Durban? After I graduated as an architect, I wanted to go to another city. And Durban is so close to, you know, Mauritius because of the climate and the people around. And so it's like a second home here. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Most graduates look for work in firms or organizations. What made you open your own studio? Once I started working in a firm here and, you know, I go home and, I, you know, I think that you've got to be creative and you have to make the most of what one day got to, got to offer, you know. So we started making art, we posted it on social media and friends loved it and it's been growing since. I can't wait to have a look at your work. The gallery is just around the corner. Let's just finish our coffee and I can show you. Recently, Nindya joined other up-and-coming local artists in an exhibition entitled Beauty and Its Beasts. And her work is also on display at the gallery of the KwaZulu-Natal Society of Arts. The pieces offer an insight into Nindya's approach to art, revealing the discipline she developed as an architect combined with an almost compulsive eye for detail. These are some of my artwork. I notice you use a lot of structure in your patterns, but you manage to transform it. Architecture is a big part of my life, and I love drawing. It keeps me sane, you know. And I use similar technique of you would use drafting, and I use I construct these patterns. The ancient tradition of Mehendi is another major source of inspiration, with Nindya exploring the aesthetic essence of the designs rather than merely applying them to decorative effects. Mehendi is used generally to adorn your hands and your feet, yet you've managed to transcend the art form. For me, when I go home after being at the office the whole day, it's very therapeutic. I sit down in my studio and I zone out and I construct these things and they become permanent pieces of art that people can have in their home. Now you use a lot of different textures with Mehendi. What else have you worked on? I use the same technique on stones and on seeds and I also use pigment in on papers. So this is some of the stone I've been drawing on and these are my pigment ink pieces and these are acrylic paint mixed with texture paste and I basically pipe it and ice on them. You recently curated an art exhibit that depicted stereotypical views on women. What was that experience like? It was an amazing experience. Putting artwork together for an exhibition is like completely something else. You've got to have like a wider view, choosing the pieces and having like an overarching theme. It's quite challenging actually. Now, I've seen your artwork here today, but do you have anything else that you're working on? I can show you my studio and the kind of tools that I use to draw and the different things I've been doing. I can't wait to see it. There's no missing the Eastern heritage visible in India's exquisitely executed patterns. But her creative vision encompasses the purely abstract as well as the artistry of cultures across the globe. Madhushan, welcome to my studio and this is where I work. I noticed you have some African pots on your table. How does local culture influence your art? My favourite place to be is in the city. I was walking 
at the Umgeni station and I saw these pots and I was like, this is so beautiful and I'd love to work with them, you know, do something on them. And I'm very happy that they can actually put a little bit of me with the pots and it, it's really, I love it. Where do you draw your inspiration from? I draw my inspiration from all over the world, African, South American, Morocco, Indian, Arabic, and I re-examine the different patterns and I bring them together and I experiment with my mediums. Like you can see this particular rock here, I basically look at the rock and I kind of you know, see the shape of it. I would either do a linear pattern or I would do a concentric pattern and I start from the center outwards. You make it look effortless. Well, you know, it took a lot of practice and a lot of hours sitting in my studio figuring out how this, how to work this medium. One of the pieces on this table actually caught my eye. Can you tell me a bit about it? This is a very different piece and it was made especially for the Human Rights Exhibition. And this particular piece portrays the working class and how they have to tick the boxes to conform, to have a job and, you know, be grateful for it. and. That's why I call it the illusion of equality. You recently attended the Africa Burn Festival. What was that experience like? The Africa Burn Festival was an incredible experience. You drive for so long and you go to a place where there's nothing you can relate to home. And I was there with my family, so it was a very special time for us. And there's so much artwork and it just, you don't feel like you're on this planet. It was incredible. Nandia, thank you so much for inviting us into your home today and definitely recharging my creative batteries. It's been a pleasure to share my world with you and Mela.